Hey, we're continuing on here with our application that demonstrates the life cycle of an activity. So in the previous app, we created this clicker. And so every time we click the object or click the button, we have another number that adds to the counter. So the problem is that when you flip the phone sideways and then you uh, reformat the app to be a horizontal app, that we lose the value of the clicker. So in this video, we're going to explore the whys behind that. And so that way we can figure out um, a lot more about the architecture of, and the life cycle of an app. So I'm back here in main activity Java. Okay, so I'm going to go find the area just before the onclick or the onCreate area. You may have never noticed, but there is the method called override here on onCreate. onCreate is one of seven different life cycle methods that we can use in our app. We're going to try the other ones. So let's right click in the space above this section and we're going to generate some new methods. So I'm going to override the methods. So you're going to wonder overriding what and where do they come from? We well, notice at the top of our app it says we are extending the app compat activity. And so the app activity, this method up here or this class, has it looks to me like two or three hundred different creations that we could override. So we're going to pick seven of them. So I'm going to type in on and I'm looking for seven things. Let's go see if we can find them. I want, there's one, on destroy. We're going to look for on create, on destroy, on start, on stop, on pause, on resume, and I think on restart. So let's go through and find these. I can hold down the control key and select multiple items at the same time. It's okay if you don't find them all in the first time, you can click OK and you'll get a few of them. So let's see, it looks like I got one, two, three, four. I'm still looking for seven. Okay, so finally it looks like I've got all seven of them. So I have on pause, on resume, on restart, on start, on stop, on destroy, and then on create is automatically provided for us every time we start an app. So let's return to our diagram here, and you can see that we have all of these different methods listed in the chart. So we're going to create a simple message for each of them and see when these items are called. So now I'm going to start using the logging capabilities of Android Studio. So the command I'm looking for is log.d which stands for debug. The first thing you put inside the parentheses here is a tag that is unique to your, your program. So I'll just name it lifecycle. And then I'll put a message that says the app is paused. So when I'm running the app, I should be able to see this down in the log cat area. So let's choose log cat. You can see that in the log, there's all kinds of messages. So warnings and errors. Right now it's set to verbose. So I'm going to switch it to debug. And let's do a right click and choose clear log cat. So this should start over. There we go. So I have a clean log cat. It's still going to spit out a few messages once in a while. And I'm going to specify that I want to see life cycle only. So I'm going to filter out all the messages with this item called regex, which stands for regular expression. That simply means that I'm going to be able to see the messages without being distracted by many others. Okay, so let's browse through here again. You can see that I'm creating a, a message that says something about every different stage of the life cycle. So it's paused, it's resumed, it's restarted, it's started and stopped and destroyed and created. So we should be able to see these events occur in our log. So you can see down here in the, the um, debug area, I've selected debug and lifecycle. I can see that there are some messages that says the app was created, but there's a whole lot of other junk that's showing up in my log file. That's because over here, my actual file name or the actual app name is lifecycle demo. So I want to come up here into the uh, actual filtering area and add my lifecycle and let's just put the word filter on. And so this will make the filter a little bit more specific. So a unique string that I want to put in to every one of these different uh, uh, tags. Okay, so I'm going to restart the app and let's see if the filter comes out any better. Okay, so now I got the app running again. 
Now for the, uh, the filtering text, I'm going to say life cycle and then put in filter. And sure enough, now I can see just the messages that are pertinent to my, uh, to my current activity. Okay, so the life cycle or the app is running. I have created, started, and resumed as my three messages. Now let's see what happens when I rotate the app. So I'll rotate it and then reformat the app to horizontal. And you can see that I have new messages. It says it paused it, it stopped it, destroyed, created, started, and resumed. So it goes through all of those methods every time you turn an app sideways. And so really, you're not actually just turning the app. You are killing the app and recreating the app. And apparently that works better with some memory management or performance issues rather than trying to rejuggle the items and reposition them on the page. So the creators of Android decided that we'll just destroy the app and recreate it every time we format it to a new screen size. Well, we can work with that. We're just going to have to make sure that we save our data before we rotate. Let's see what else happens. What happens if I switch to another app? So I click the X or the box in the corner. And let's see, do I have any other apps running? It looks like I have a camera. Another app tutorial that I did. And let's switch back. So I switch back to my original app and you can see that I went through a started and resumed. It looks like pause, stopped, restarted. So it goes through several different things depending on what your um, actions are. The important part is that when you um, turn an app sideways, that's usually where the problems occur. So I want to fix this issue now where we have the counter restarting. So let's go back into our code. I'm going to take a couple of new methods now. So let's uh, find some space. I'm going to go right to the top of the page because it's easy to find space there. I'm going to do another override. So I'm pressing Control O on my keyboard and that brings up the overrides. I'm looking for something called save state. And sure enough, there it is. On save instance state. Let's cho choose that one. And let's take a look at what this method is supposed to do. The onSave instance state is used just before we go into the uh, process of killing and recreating our app. So it gives you the last opportunity to save any values. It also has this thing called a bundle. A bundle you can think of as a class, like a person or a car. It has properties in it, except a bundle you can define the actual properties of your class at runtime. So here's how it works. Well, obviously I need to keep this value called clicks. So let's go into the bundle. Our bundle here is named outState. So outState dot. And what do we have for choices? We have put. We have put int. We have put string. Let's try put int. So there are two different fields that we have to fill in. Let's call it clicker value. And We'll actually put the variable of the name there. So that should be it. We're going to have a new property called clicker value, and it's saving the value of clicks. Well, that will put the value in a temporary storage location. To capture it, we're going to have to go to another override. So let's see if there's anything on restore. There it is. It's called on restore instance state. Let's go and choose this one now. So the on restore is going to have the same bundle activity. Let's go save state instance. So we're going to say that clicks is going to be assigned this thing called saved instance state. And we're going to say get, and there should be an int choice, get int. And look at the parameter. It says, I'm getting an integer, but you have to provide a string of the key value. Well, let's see if we can remember that. It was called clicker value. And so that will restore it. So that will get us almost the way, all the way there. What I'd like to do is also update the text view counter. So let's say text view counter. We're going to have to actually capture this again. We're going to find the actual uh, item in the layout. And then we'll put the text value on it. So this is called set text. And let's see integer dot two string all right, so with this kind of a method, we have a on saved instance state and on restore instance state. These two work together. 
So if you have more than just the value clicks, you're going to have a list of integers and strings and everything else that you want to save into your, into your um, data. Unfortunately, you can't save things like array lists very easily. So let's try this thing out. All right, so the app has launched. It looks like it was stuck in horizontal. So one, two, three, four, five, looking good. Now let's switch this to a um, vertical app and reformat the app. It still stays at six. Now we're at seven, eight, nine. So my high scores and my form values are preserved. Way to go. Now this method works really well if only you have integers and strings, things like that are pretty simple. Let's say you have a long list of data, like an array list. Now that's a little more complicated. The method that I would recommend is to create a, a global variable, which you may have seen in the uh, list view demo that we did in a previous video. You could also take your entire list and serialize it. That means translate it from a list into a long string of text. And then you could save that as a string. And then you'd have to unpack it at the other end. So there's a lot of overhead work there. So if you have a lot of values in an array list, um, that's for another subject. But you can find tutorials on the internet or else just use a global variable so that you don't have to do the uh, actual serialization. So this kind of gets us to the end here of the lifecycle demo. You'll use this in many cases and you'll find this necessary when your users are flipping your phone sideways normally and you want to save the data.